Hello, neighbor. We're going to be talking about this buzzword called the Melchizedek ministry. What it takes to be king's priest in the world to come, in the age to come, what we know as a millennial reign. If you look in your Bibles, in Revelation, the fourth chapter, we're going to see a throne room picture and a panoramic view of the throne room of God. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to be focusing on today is a wheel in the middle of a wheel and in what the body of Christ is set before them for the prize, and it's a high calling of God in Christ, but it's a prize, and it's a prize that one must run to obtain. It's not something that uh, uh, we can set back and be at ease in Zion or settle on our leaves and expect to uh, be a part of. So there's a glory uh, to the body of Christ, a glory that God has foreordained for those that he did foreknow, those he did predestinate. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. Now, the glorification is the last step. It's glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, that's unto a perfect man. And we're going to be talking about perfection. That's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And what that wheel is. And the Melech and the Zadok ministry. Melech king, Zadok priesthood. Melchizedek. So, in Revelation 4, we're going to see that there are, in that throne room, panoramic view of that throne room, there are four beasts. And in the Greek, when you look those up, they're going to be zoe. That's Z-O-E, that's living creatures. And those living creatures, it's going to have a little bit different order than what we see in Ezekiel, the first chapter in Ezekiel 10. But it's going to be a start out with a line there. But in Ezekiel, it's going to start with a man. But we're going to see as a lion, ox, man, and eagle that are the four beasts, and they're going to be full of eyes before and behind. Now, we have always been taught in the church world that these cherubim of glory are angels. And I'm here to tell you they're not angels. Angels are not redeemed. So if you look at Revelation 4, I'm going to call a couple of scriptures out here, and we're going to Ezekiel. And uh, in Ezekiel 10, we're going to see the same beast of Revelation 4 and 5, or the same beast or cherubim of glory in the living creatures that we see by the river Kibar in Babylon. Now, this church has been in Babylon for over 2,000 years. And God's people's in Babylon. Now, you've been told it's been Rome. And it's, you know, the seven hills where the woman said it. That's Rome. And, and you gotta, can't get out of the RCC, the Roman Catholic Church. Well, I got news for you. Is it come you out of her, my people? If there's confusion in the body of Christ, that's Babylon. It's Babel. And God then is bringing his church unto perfection. Now, the hour is now come for the body of Christ to come unto perfection. But many don't know, say, well, how do you do that? And when I say perfection unto a perfect man, I'm not talking about uh, sinless where you come to the place where you cannot sin and that you're already uh, taking on your glorified body uh, in the resurrection. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a state of glory that in full maturity, you're caught up to God and to his throne, walking in the light, and he's as he's in the light. Most people believe that you just ask Jesus coming to your heart, you're saved. Well, you've got to know who Jesus is to begin with because this ain't, if, if you don't, then uh, uh, it's not going to make any sense to you. You ask Jesus to come into your heart, I guarantee you he didn't come into your heart. You've got to do it the Bible way, and this is for Bible-believing people that believe the Word of God. Now, if you don't believe the Word of God, the best thing you do is turn this thing off and uh, go to the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity Trinity sites. But if you love God, and you want the truth, then hang in there a minute, partner, and we'll see exactly where God's leading this body of Christ. Now, you cannot water down truth. Somebody say, well, the truth is pungent. And Jesus said he's a hard and austere man. Well, that's the truth is. The truth is in your face. Jesus was the most radical man that ever lived. 
But now we got him all watered down and rooty tooted, fresh and fruited, long haired, some kind of hump shouldered little uh, effeminate thing walking down the sea coast of Galilee. Well, that ain't the Jesus I'm talking about. Today I'm talking about the Word of God. I'm talking about the real God, the only true God in eternal life, Jesus Christ. Now, friend, you've got to know that to begin with. We're one God, Jesus' name to the bone. And that ain't something from the backside of your house somewhere. This is in, out there, on there, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, with that said, let's go into what God is calling his body to today. Not in 10 years. Not in another two years. But right now, right now, God is calling his saints of the living God to raise up a body. The word has gone forth, and the and uh, uh, the lion hath roared. Who can but prophesy? And that lion is Judah, my friend. Now let's take a look at this lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ. Now it's all Jesus. Let me say that to the beginning. It's all Jesus from the beginning to the end. It's Jesus Christ. We are nothing without Him. Now I'm going to say that it's enough for the servant to be as his master, and if we're not as our master walking in the light as he's in the light. Then we don't have fellowship one with another. There's no blood flow. And then the blood of Jesus Christ does not cleanse us from all righteousness. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, that is present truth flowing from the throne of God, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now look at Revelation 4. I want you to see that these four beasts over here in Revelation 4, these are in the midst of the throne. And the first beast in verse 7, that's Revelation 4, 7. It said, and the first beast was like a lion. It didn't say it was a lion. It said it's like a lion. Now, the four beasts there are going to be, uh, with the four faces, are going to be exactly the same we see in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10. So the first one, the first beast is that of a lion. The second beast, like a calf or the ox. The third beast, the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Not just an eagle. This is a flying eagle. It means it's a suddenly. It is an impact of taking one end of the earth to the other in the lightning speed of the gospel of Jesus Christ swiftly. If you look it up in the Greek, it means a swiftly flying eagle. Uh, suddenly. In other words, a work of God that covers the earth very quickly. A quick work. Now, the, the four beasts, I want you to see that each of them had rings right about them. And uh, they have uh, in the midst of their seven burning lamps, which are the seven spirits of God. And these beasts over here in Revelation 5, I want you to see the beast and the four and twenty elders. And the beasts are what we're talking about today. The wheel in the middle of a wheel make up the chariot of God, which is the wheels plus a cherubim of glory equals the chariot of God. And that's what God rides in, in, in the earth. Now, if you look at Revelation 5 and verse uh, 9, and these beasts and four and twenty elders, you see that in verse 8. The first, the four beasts and the twenty uh, elders, they fell down before the throne. Now, who are these beasts? Look at verse 6. Revelation 5, I'm sorry, verse 9, they sung a new song. That's a sure, sure kadash. That's the song of Jesus Christ, the song of the redeemed, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Why? Because these cherubim, these beasts, these zoe, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Those are not angels. God didn't redeem the angels. The redeemed us are the four beasts and the four and twenty elders before the throne. So redeemed us. These are redeemed of God. But well, somebody said, well, why does it have a lion, ox, man, and eagle? Because the lion is the top in all the different phylums in the kingdoms in the, of the earth in, the, in, in creation. The lion is the king of all beasts. That for there is a call him the king of the jungle. <laughs> then you have an ox. Well, he's the, the strongest of all the, 
the servant uh, 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 plowing, uh, and, it's, and an increase comes by the strength of the ox. But where the crib is clean, there's no increase. Well, the ox is the head of all those in the strength of that of a servant. Well, then the man is the head of all uh, primates. In the fallen primates, man is a superior. And the eagle is the king of all the birds, flies high, soars higher, and sees far off its prey. And that eagle is the, is the highest order and the, of the fowls of the air. So now you have the lion ox, man, and eagle all being the top, the highest order or rank that you can get in, in these various uh, animal kingdoms. Well, when we talk about uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Well, it's obviously, it's a metaphor. Jesus is not a lion. He's going to go out there and eat somebody. But we're talking about a lion of the tribe of Judah being a metaphor that he's the king of all the animals of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the forest, of the, uh, the, the jungle, the king of, of the beast as being the lion. Uh, the ox having the greatest strength and the servant pulling and plowing the fields. As, and we're to plow these fields out here and sow it ourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy. Uh, reach souls. That's the strength of the ox. And, and uh, the man coming to the perfect man uh, to the image of Jesus Christ. And, and then the eagle where you see you pray afar off and, and be able to swoop down and, and uh, uh, take that prey. Uh, there in the kingdom. Well, that is each one of these lion, ox, man, and eagle literally stand for in the truth of the word of God the highest glory of redeemed man. Now, let me say that again. The lion, ox, man, and eagle is the highest glory, the highest glorified state of redeemed man. Man is redeemed. He starts out and he's, he's as a little child, a baby. And a newborn babe desireth and sincere milk of the word. They may grow thereby. Well, you're on the milk. But then you get to where you can crawl around a little bit. And you get to, you get to where you can crawl and walk a little bit. And you stand up on your feet. Now, now uh, you've grown. That inner man has grown up into Christ. Uh, to being in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't happen in one day. Uh, so he becomes there. And he said, uh, John said over there, little children, I've spoken to you because you've known the Father. All right. Then he called them children. Then he, then he said, but I've spoken to you fathers. Because you have known his will. Well, the father's there. It's a full-grown, mature man there that you went from a state of a little baby on your inner man, not the outside man, not the old fleshly man. We're talking about the inner man, which is created in, uh, after Christ Jesus, created in Christ Jesus, a new man, the new creature in Christ, that inner man. That man there has stages to grow in. And we're talking about the final stage of glory. The highest state of redeemed man is what we're talking about in the cherubim of glory. They are not angels. They are redeemed man in its highest state of glory before we go into the kingdom of God realized or manifested in the earth. This is the reason we call it manifested sons of God where you have the kingdom manifested in the earth. Now, with that said, with that said, it says that these beasts are going to have eyes uh, full of eyes before and behind. Well, somebody said, that's an awful looking creature. He's got eyes before him, eyes behind him, got eyes everywhere. Well, the eyes speak of the eyes of your understanding being open. That's not you got 15,000 eyes walking around out there in your head. It's talking about you know those things of God. The, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you know those things. And he's written to us in Revelation to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And there's things before and behind. Before the throne, behind the four and twenty elders, these beasts have the revelation, and they are Issachar, they have the understanding of the times, but in true faith, they have the faith of God. When Jesus comes, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Yes, right there in the Son of Man. Right there in faith in the people of God reflected in the lion, ox, man, and eagle in the four faces of the cherubim of glory caught up to God and to his throne full of eyes, their eyes of their understanding being opened before and behind. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 
And in Ezekiel, we're going to talk about these cherubim again. So I hope you get that they are the redeemed of the Lord. 